So I wasn't lying. This is the uh, heavily illustrated stuff that doesn't really fit in with the other categories. Um, now, the one uploaded before this is the manga. So let's kind of start there with uh, the art book for the Kingdom Hearts manga. Yeah, this is uh, a very interesting uh, read because it's just pictures and then like some paragraphs and stuff at the beginning and the end, I believe. But rest assured, it's it, it's well worth your time and your money. I really dig the Kingdom Hearts manga, like I said. And being able to uh, get a bit of a deeper dive into it, that was a great way to kick off uh, reading what I hadn't read last year. And like I said, I still need to read the day's manga, I'm aware. I'm also aware that they continued the manga for only Kingdom Hearts 3. And I'm hesitant, because I feel like they're going to break the canon of the manga. And I don't like that, because I really like the way the manga turned out. Um, if it captures the spirit of the manga, still, great. Maybe I'll read it. You guys can tell me in the comments. But if it just feels like an adaptation of 3, and like really has all the connecting stuff that like, the manga clearly didn't have, because the manga stopped after, after uh, 2, <laughs> so it never had a birth by sleep or anything, so... That just sounds way too confusing for me. But hey, I showed you Pokemon. I'll show you Pokemon. This might as well be the Emerald Art Book, right? That is the original Prima Strategy Guide for Pokemon Emerald. I grew up with that, although I got rid of my copy years ago and bought this new one. <laughs> Doesn't have uh, the maps for every area, unfortunately, but it was still fun rereading it, and considering it does have official artwork in it, that's just nice to have for a game I love so much. Now, since we're on video game stuff, hey, here's the Art of Cuphead. I got a copy of the Art of Cuphead. I haven't read through it yet, but I am very looking forward to it. So this is the thing. My special Christmas adventure. Um, what is so unique about this? Well, after I graduated college, I got an ad for one of these from a thing I bought, and I could not help but decide to do it for myself. The best part is I actually even wrote it out by hand, which means they couldn't always read what I said. Look at the channel name and tell me that that's not my name, because you're right, it isn't. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they knew that I, they were doing this for an adult, and I don't think they cared. I think they cared that they got my money. I should say in that, there's actually like a good deal of effort for everything besides the typos. <laughs> Which I think are actually my fault. Hence why I'm willing to believe that they're my fault, because the rest of the book is pretty solid. Here's a book from my childhood that actually is the version from my childhood. This is A Most Unusual Lunch by Robert Bender. Um, from a company called Troll? I, I never noticed that until now. This is weird. Animals eat other animals, and then take on the aspect of those animals. And why is the snake so brown? He looks like chocolate or poop. <laughs> uh, this alligator crocodile thing. He knows what's going on. Uh, this is a weird book and I kind of love it to death. Um, so much so, hey, comments again, hit me up. If they ever got featured in like Reading Rainbow or something, let me know. I'd be genuinely interested to see LeVar Burton try to figure out that weird book. Uh, so I saw the Broadway tour of Hairspray and they were selling these books for probably too much. I don't even remember what's in it. I think it's just like cast photos and like like interviews and stuff, but I mean, hey, when you say something ridiculous, like, well, ridiculous, like, when you say something as special as like a Broadway tour, you have to spend extra money on stuff. That's just the rule. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't regret buying that. That's a nice little thing that I genuinely continue to forget I have. Um, and here's something I inherited from my late grandmother. The Collector's Value Guide to Tie Beanie Babies. <laughs> uh, my grandmother had a, like a gigantic collection of Beanie Babies. So much so that my mother continues to hold on to them and just kind of like hand them out uh, annually as like Christmas gifts. And she still has plenty left. Definitely not going to crack this open, but uh, I have a baby book. <laughs> and um, because my mother just gave it to me, it's like, well... I guess it goes in the pile of uh, weird illustrated stuff, I guess. <laughs> Aren't you glad you got to see that? 
that personal thing. You want me to grab my last high school yearbook next to? Because uh, I, I do have that. This is the bedtime anytime storybook. Uh, this is uh, from Joyful Noises. This is surprisingly nice uh, by V. Gilbert Beers and illustrated by Tim O'Connor. It's a bit of a thick book. Uh, my mother and I, we used to, well, she read them to me. You know, these, uh, like, pretty good night before I go to sleep for uh, quite a while. They're weirdly religious. Like, they mention God a lot, but, like, it's it's old school religious stuff where they just mention God, which is fine. Like, genuinely, I have no problem with that. I, I only bring it up because, like, I mean, you've seen the stuff that, like, Pure Flix tries to tell you is a good movie. <laughs> it's, it's an old school religious thing where they just mention God. Like Veggie Tales, they, they mention God. It's not, like, actually about religion. It just has that as a slight angle with an angle, which, eh, I'm fine with. Uh, we have the Very Hungry Caterpillar, which I genuinely don't know why I bought this. Actually, I do know why I bought this. I'll be right back again. Bought it because it came with this. <laughs> Uh, a surprisingly well and accurate and like, oh my god, pretty much exact size um, of the one on the book. Uh, so yeah, that's the best part of that book. I also want to go the fuck to sleep, <laughs> which, uh, this is a fun book. This is a great book. I genuinely, unironically am glad I bought that. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to show it just because the name's on it, but I do have my old high school yearbook. I only bought one. It was the one near the very end. But don't worry, I have it. I just won't show it to you. Um, so last time I went to the circus, I decided to buy one last book. When I was a kid, I would buy these all the time and have like the clowns and the mascots uh, sign them. Uh, I don't have any of those because I was too old. Because this was pretty recent. This was like a last hurrah thing. I'd be like, you know what? I'm an adult. I'm going to go to the circus like one last time. And I bought this, and I was like, do I really want to bother <laughs> these people as an adult saying, would you please sign this? No, that's not fair. So I didn't do that. So, sorry. Disney Treasure Storybook class Children's Classics. Sorry, not Storybook. 22 Tales from Cinderella to the Lion King. And God, this is heavy. <sighs> apparently, I didn't even know I had this until very recently, but apparently this is like a cherished thing or whatever. So, cool. I own something very important that I didn't even know I had. And finally, to really end it off, Unfiltered, the complete Ralph Bashke. Uh, this is, yeah, like, oh, well, there's Mighty Mouse in the top corner. That's nice. This has, as you see, like, his most famous movies on the front here. Although, why is Cool considered one of his famous movies? How dare they? <laughs> um, but also, it was actually a gift from my sister, who technically knows some people. Check it out. There's actually an illustration in here. Which is always nice. I believe he does I believe after all he was just doing this to anybody who would buy one copy from him directly. But I got that before that was happening. So I don't think that illustration is part of the book. I think it was just because I got it from a friend of a family member. They were like, hey I can hook you up and get you like an actual like illustrated copy. <laughs> But like I said, it's technically a little bit less special now, because Ralph made a comeback, slightly, but that also means I was one of those people who Ralph more or less silently credited when he said I came back because I didn't realize I still had a huge fan base, so, hey, I'll take that. <laughs> well, that's it for my art books, illustrated kids books, whatever else you want to call that stuff. Do you see where it's confusing? Let's make it more confusing. Look, I have this printed off copy of an old fairy tale or whatever. That boy looks really weird. Uh, I did that for a sound design class. I always wanted to do it again to make it better because the sound quality was terrible. Maybe I will. I'm not saying look here in the future for that. I'm just saying I'm not saying I won't do that. Alright, that ends part three. Take care, everybody.